And welcome to another Cardinals Nest here on HBC Channel 25. Dean Beckman along with Sports Information Director Donnie Netto back with you for another week of Cardinals Athletics and other events going on on the St. Mary's campus. And Donnie, right now we are in the heat of the winter season as far as sports teams are concerned. There's just so much going on right now and a lot going on in the offices of student development and outdoor leadership. And we'll have uh, Chris Kendall on. He's the vice president for student development. And Gary Borash, who's the director of outdoor leadership, He'll be joining us a little bit later on the interview program as well. Yeah, it'd be nice to have Chris on. We can talk about the upcoming SMU 10K uh, event that's uh, that's happening, along with some other things that are going on with outdoor leadership. And then maybe if we have time, we can ask Chris about his chickens. You know, he is a chicken farmer now, and uh, you know his the eggs are delicious. And uh, you know, between the chickens and the bees and. All the outdoor leadership, I think Chris has got a lot of stories he can yeah, tell Yeah, he, he can even pen a song about it because That's right. he's well known for that as well. So we'll have uh, Chris and Gary on the program a little bit later to tell us about what's going on in their offices. But first, Donnie, uh, really the conference season is really starting to kick into high gear now for all of the winter sports teams. And we'll begin with swimming and diving because they just had uh, their home meet uh, this past weekend. And uh, there were a couple of different teams involved and really great outings for both the women and men's uh, swimmers and divers considering they had been off since well before Christmas break. Yeah, the one thing Coach Lindquist was a little bit worried about was having such a long break before they had a competition again. But as you can see on the screen there, uh, St. Mary's did outstanding in the in the duel for the men and then the, the two uh, the double duel victories for the women. Uh, on the guy's side, Mark Ross, who uh, we talked a lot about last year at the end of the year at the MIEC Championships, had a great uh, a great duel against Hamlin. And then and then Liz Flynn and Abby, Abby Kratzky did a great job uh, uh, for the women. It was a really good, solid meet for them. And, you know, it's their first home meet. And, and I know Coach Linkos was excited about that, being able to compete in front of their home their home crowd and and obviously uh, that certainly spurred on the uh, the Cardinals to do a, a really nice job and it was you know one of those meets that they don't get very many of where they have them at home and so for them to to be home and to be able to have a good solid meet was uh, was a, a, a double a double bonus for for coach yeah. Lindquist. You know we talk a lot about uh, the divers but, but some of the swimmers specifically Abby Kratzky, Molly Spray, Andrea Fogel really starting to kick into high gear here um, probably at the time of the season where Coach Lindquist uh, wants to see some improving times. Yeah, as we've talked over and over, their season really, everything they do starts to lead up to the uh, conference championships, which are really only a month away. So uh, they're starting to get into the heat of their, their training and to try and get ready for, uh, for the conference championships. And, and right now, he needs to see some of those times from a lot of different people if they hope to make any type of a noise at the, uh, at the conference championships. So hopefully they can continue that this weekend at Carleton. And then uh, as they move forward, uh, Hopefully that UW-River Falls meet will stay up. Right now, Coach Linkowitz is talking about the possibility of having to change that because of some scheduling conflicts. But, uh, you know, they've got a couple of duels left and an invitation at the University of Minnesota. So uh, their season's kind of wrapping up, and then, and then we'll be talking in a couple weeks about the all-important conference championships. All right, let's uh, go now to men's hockey action. They are back into conference play now. Donnie, they were taking on St. Olaf last weekend. And uh, a terrific shutout performance on Friday night in Winona for the home crowd. And even though the students weren't back yet, there was a nice uh, crowd from the community on hand to watch uh, the Cardinals win that one, two to nothing. Jason Horseman did an outstanding job, but I thought even more impressive than that is the Cardinals really controlled that game offensively didn't give St. Olaf a, a ton of opportunities offensively. Absolutely, and as Coach Moore has always said, they they have a lot. St. Mary's has a lot of speed. And a lot of quickness and, and playing on the big rink is certainly a, an advantage to them when they're playing at home. And it was really one of those one of those uh, three three first sequels, one win for the Cardinals. And in, in that Nick Nagel and Andrew Ketterer both had their first collegiate goals. And as you said, Jason Horseman, 27 saves for his first collegiate shutout. It was a, a great team performance and really a dominating performance. They really did control that game from start to finish. And, and uh, it was nice to see them get a win for that. Unfortunately, when you talk about Saturday's rematch at, at St. Olaf, it wasn't quite the same outcome. St. Mary's jumped out to a 3-0 lead and wasn't able to hang on, and they lost 4-3. to three. Really a heartbreaker in that St. Olaf scored their last goal with 27 seconds left in regulation. So it was one of those games that, you know, as Coach Moore says, one of those that very easily could have gone their way. They've got to learn how to win. A lot of young people, and they still have to learn what it takes to hold the lead in the third period and, and, and come away with a victory. Uh, hopefully a, a really good learning experience for them. But for the, for the two games, it was an outstanding performance all the way around. And, Donnie, you were at that Saturday game in Northfield. Uh, 
you know, as you said, they got out to that 3 nothing lead. What was the reason for the comeback? Uh, did the Cardinals have a little bit of a letdown there in that third period? Well, I think or? part of it, I think part of it was is, is St. Olaf gained some momentum. They scored a goal uh, late in the second period to make it 3-1, to one, and then uh, went on the power play early in the third period and got another goal to make it 3-2. to two. And most of the time, you'll hear anybody say the toughest lead to hold is a, is a two-goal lead. Went into the uh, third period with that two-goal lead. Gave up one right away, and then, uh, you know, St. Olaf played very well in the third period. you got to give them credit. And then uh, their best players, Isaac Trampik, scored the goal for them with 27 seconds left. It's a game that, you know, coach, like Coach Moore said, as he was showed the standings there just a, a little while ago, a win there, they would have been two points out of first place. Uh, instead, right now, they're, they're still in that mix for, uh, you know, for the four, five, six uh, spots in the conference. And, and, and I'm sure he's happy with that. It's one of those that you could say we should be here, but to get a split, uh, you know, it's a good start as they begin their real conference push here. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, they can, they can put that loss behind them and uh, be ready for this weekend against Bethel. Yeah, and, yeah and, and as you saw in the conference standings, Bethel right behind the Cardinals in the conference standings. At this time of the year, it doesn't get much bigger because this is an important series for the Cardinals. Absolutely. Every, every series from here on out is going to be important. And, you know, as Coach Moore will say, nothing's more important than the game you're playing right now. And, and Friday night, they're at home again against Bethel. And then on Saturday, they head up to, to Blaine for, to the Schwann's uh, rink and, and will play Bethel again. And it's a very big weekend. And what Coach Moore needs is another performance just like he got this weekend. They need to continue to, to dominate play, and hopefully uh, this time when we're talking next week, we'll be talking about two wins rather than a split. On the show last week, he mentioned uh, Brad Denny's name, saying that uh, for a freshman, he is rounding out into a really good defenseman, and I watched him on Friday night, and uh, definitely the case. He's certainly... Uh, shined through as one of the better players on the ice. Not quite sure we're going to have Coach Moore on talking about his players anymore. <laughs> Brad did get hurt on Saturday's. Okay. In Saturday's game, he injured his, his ankle. Right now, he's questionable for Friday. Vincent Uncles Bay, who we talked very highly of, injured his ankle, hasn't been able to put his skate on yet this week for practice. So the old I broadcaster's think, curse. Yes, right? I think we're going to keep Coach Moore <laughs> off of the show for a while. But you're right, Brad Denny was outstanding on, on Friday night. And, and he's, a, he's a very good defenseman, a very solid defenseman. And, and uh, Coach Moore's uh, uh, plan of moving Vincent Vincent back from uh, forward to D has worked out very well. He's an, he's an extremely solid defenseman and gives him some offensive punch back there. So I think that the move that he made with putting Vincent back there has really paid off, and, and hopefully uh, both of those two will be in the lineup on, if not Friday, at least on Saturday. Well, last Saturday, the women's hockey team did play a conference opponent, except it was a non-conference game against St. Olaf, and a disappointing performance. Uh, the Cardinals were coming off of a couple of losses in the Codfish Bowl tournament. Uh, over uh, the start of the new year and then came back and took on St. Olaf on January 15th there. Donnie, they lose 5-1, to one, and St. Olaf, uh, they were getting some players back from injury, so they were, came in only two wins on the season. That might have been a little bit deceiving, probably a better team than that. But also the fact that they hadn't played in 35 days, I thought they might have tired legs, meaning St. Olaf, they didn't. They came out motivated to play well, and that they did. Yeah, they played very well. And you have to give credit to St. Olaf, and you're right. A 35-day layoff like that, sometimes you think it might take them a while to get going. But I think it was more they were, they were kind of motivated to play well because they hadn't played in so long. And uh, St. Mary's, on the other hand, it was one of their... You know, not one of their better efforts. Um, I think that offensively they had a lot of chances that they didn't convert on. And, uh, you know, to give up five goals is not a good thing. You can't afford to be giving up five goals to any team, and especially a conference opponent, whether it's a non-conference game or not. Um, you don't want to be able to give up that many that many goals. But when you talk to Coach Manor after the game, the one thing he did say was the best part of this game is, is it meant absolutely nothing. Uh, yes, it was a conference opponent. Yes, it's a loss. But still, right now what's important is the conference standings. And as you see there, St. Mary's will enter this weekend against Bethel at 3-0-3. And, and that's what matters is the fact that they're still unbeaten in the conference. The nice thing about playing St. Olaf in a non-conference game is they get the opportunity to see what St. Olaf has. And so they'll have a little bit of a scouting report as they head into the end of the season when they'll play St. Olaf for their conference. Conference series, So it works kind of nice that way to have that non-conference game. But on the flip side, St. Olaf has that same advantage in that they know what St. Mary's is all about. And, and hopefully we didn't show them anything on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And when we play them again uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the year, uh, we'll be a completely different right. team than we were on Saturday. And, and similar to the men, uh, they take on Bethel this weekend, who they're right ahead of in the conference standings. And I was talking to one of the players this week, and, and what she says is right now, if we take care of our own business, if we just worry about ourselves, we'll be fine as far as the playoffs go. And Absolutely. so that's where the focus is at, improving their game 
and not worrying so much about who they're playing and how good that opponent Absolutely. is. Absolutely. The one thing they do need to do a little bit better job of, they've got to get their offense going. That's three games in a row now that they've just scored one goal. Nicole Olson has scored two of those three goals. So they need to get some more people involved like they were doing earlier in the year. Uh, right now, their, their offense kind of a, a little bit stagnant. You know, one goal in three straight games. That needs to pick up if they're going to be successful beginning this weekend against Bethel. Let's take a look at the basketball teams now. And Donnie, we'll start with men's basketball. A, a five-game skid as we tape this uh, heading into Wednesday's game. Uh, overall, they're still above 500. They have slipped now to three and six in the conference standings because of the five-game skid. Um, a long road trip, and that's where the bulk of their problems have come here. The last one, uh, a game against St. John's, they were definitely, uh, they played right with the Johnnies in the first half. It was the second half and a bad shooting percentage uh, that led St. John's to that big win. Yeah, it was unfortunate because they did play very well in the first half. Unfortunately, they couldn't get their shots to drop in the second half. And, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, as Coach Lanham will say, it's a 40-minute game. It's great that they're playing 20 minutes because earlier when they started, the, you know, their struggles, they weren't even playing a good solid first half or second half. Right now, they're, they're just not putting it all together, and, and uh, you know, that needs to improve. And uh, you, you can, we can talk about Chris Palmer a lot. That's certainly <laughs> been, a, been a positive for, for the Cardinals. He's uh, had four double-doubles in his last five games, a streak that was actually snapped on uh, on Monday night against St. John's when he had 24 points and nine boards. So uh, he's just doing a phenomenal job. I mean, he's uh, he's playing very well. And, and uh, no matter what teams do to try to stop him, they just can't slow him down. Will Wright had a great game against uh, against St. John's with 19 points. It was good to see him get back. He had a couple games there where he was under uh, 10 points a, a game, and that's not like uh, the Will Wright that we know. So it was good to see him get his shooting touch back, and, and hopefully that will continue. And, and, and uh, the two of them, along with Lucas and Pat Freeman and Michael Burfine, they can all get it all together and put it together and, and uh, get things back on the right track. Yeah, coming up on Saturday, it's a women's and men's doubleheader against Gustavus, and the women's game will be at 3 o'clock right here on Channel 25 HBC. And then uh, they're at Bethel next week. So, uh, you know, still have some road games coming up uh, despite the recent long road trip. But that game against Gustavus, uh, in a way, it kind of becomes a must win for the Cardinals. Yeah, it'll be the first time that they've seen Gustavus. Now, they play Wednesday, you know, as we're taping, they play Wednesday against Augsburg, the second time they've seen Augsburg. So they're kind of starting the second uh, rotation of the conference schedule, except for Gustavus, a team they haven't played in, and a team that St. Mary's broke a long, lengthy streak, uh, losing streak against last year. So I'm sure that uh, Gustavus will be ready for us, and, and uh, I know Coach Lanham would love to have two in a row against Gustavus, and being at home and, and a doubleheader on, uh, on TV here on HBC, so it should be a great day of basketball, and, and hopefully the Cardinals will be able to, to come through with a victory. And you hate, hate to say it's a must-win game, but you know, given the long losing streak here, they've got to start making up some ground, and Gustavus would be a great team uh, to, to start against. Absolutely, so. and it's, you know, they're right there. I mean, even at three and six, they've mm -hmm. got, uh, you know, they've got quite a few conference games left, so there's no panic button yet, but uh, as Coach Landrum would say, you know, it, it's not a bad thing to feel like your back's up against the wall and that you have to come out swinging, and I think that's what he expects yeah. his team to do right now. In women's basketball, uh, they lost a game against uh, St. Ben's on Monday night. The previous game, though, uh, Donnie, uh, they had a strong second half and won that game, a game in which Jess Miller, someone we have talked about for years, the last four years here on the show, she had a terrific game. Uh, she went over 1,000 points uh, last weekend, and, uh, you know, we have some highlights here from that game, and uh, it was really nice. I would say the last couple of, probably the last month, she has asserted herself offensively maybe more than I've seen her do in the past. Well, she, right now she's in, she's in a, a span of uh, absolutely her career best. She's got four straight games of more than 20 points, and uh, she had 21 against St. Catherine when she picked up her 1,000th uh, point, and she needed all 21 that night to get that 1,000th point, which was great because she was able to do it uh, at home in front of the home crowd. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing what she's been able to do. And really, what's really impressive is the last, uh, her game against St. Catherine and then her game against St. Benedict, she scored 17 of her 20-plus uh, you know, points in the second half. So she started a little bit slow, but, boy, in that second half, she's really picked it up. And, you know, she's, she's only had eight times the, in her career where she's had uh, 20 points, and four of those are in a row here uh, with a stretch that uh, included uh, Monday against St. Benedict. So she's playing extremely well and, and uh, doing an outstanding job. She needs to lead offensively, and uh, right now that's exactly what she's yeah. doing. Name the conference player of the week, and an intern in your office, Alex Conover, had a chance uh, to catch up with Jess Miller after she scored that 1,000th point, and uh, she was, you know, humble as ever. Let's uh, hear what Jess had to say. 
It felt great. Um, I was just lucky enough to have girls passing me the ball a lot tonight, too, so that helped. <laughs> That's right, yeah, and you needed 21 points coming in, yeah. and you got 21 right on the nose. <laughs> Were you worried you weren't going to make it? Um, honestly, I thought it was more than that, so I wasn't really worried about really? it. Um, <laughs> and then the closer it got, people started beating me and beating me, and I kind of figured that it was coming up, so... Donnie, as uh, we look now from a team perspective, you know, they're still okay. They're 5-5 five and five in conference play. They are 7-6 and six overall. And uh, this weekend, uh, they have, of course, uh, Augsburg on Wednesday and then Gustavus in that uh, women's men's doubleheader at uh, 1 o'clock. Yeah, play. and as we talk, we've played Gust Augsburg already and beaten them. So uh, hopefully we'll be going into that August or that uh, Gustavus game on Saturday, you know, with a six and five record. And Gustavus is, as you look at standings, Gustavus is one of those teams that's just above St. Mary's in the standings. Be a great way to uh, really end the uh, the first round of conference play is to get a, to get a win over uh, number five Gustavus, and and uh, you know hopefully that would really be a big boost as we uh, start the second round and, and really start talking about playoff runs and and pushes to get into uh, into the conference playoffs. All right, so Mandy Pearson has the team playing well. Uh, just a few uh, uh, different things to get over, mostly from a shooting perspective. And finally, Donnie, in uh, track and field, uh, the spring season, the indoor season, has started for track and field, and uh, they took uh, some action in the Minnesota Open last week. Yeah, Andrew Brigham, we've talked about him a lot last year. Uh, he just picked up right where he left off. He, he finished second in the, uh, in the weight throw with a throw of 18.98 meters, which automatically qualifies him for the NCAA Indoor National Championships in his first event uh, of the season. So that's great for him. He probably gets a, a, you know, a little weight off his back and that he doesn't have to worry about trying to qualify. He's already in. He's good to go. And uh, his throw is right now ranked second in the, in the nation in NCAA Division Three at 18.98 meters. So a great start for him, and I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot about him as, uh, as the season progresses. And, and they're uh, at St. Thomas on Friday, so he'll be up there competing there. And, and uh, it's hard to believe we're talking about spring sports when it's only uh, middle of January. But uh, track and field has the indoor season, then the outdoor season. So they're off and running, and, and, uh, and hopefully they'll, uh, they'll continue to do some great things. All right, coming up next, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the SMU 10K Ski Classic, which is on January 30th this year. We'll tell you how you can get involved with that. We'll have Chris Kendall and Gary Borash on next here on the Cardinals Nest on HBC. Twins fans, this is Twins territory, and the 51st annual Twins Winter Caravan is coming to a city near you, January 16th through the 20th, 23rd through the 27th, and January 31st. This is your chance to talk Twins baseball with current and former players and the coaching staff as they set their sights on the upcoming baseball season. For more information, visit twinsbaseball.com or call 833-TWINS. Thanks for watching the Cardinals Nest here on HBC Channel 25. Dean Beckman along with Donnie Netto. Joined now by Gary Borash. Gary is the uh, Outdoor uh, Leadership Office Director. And Chris Kendall, the uh, Vice President for Student Development at St. Mary's. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Gary and Chris. And Chris, we're going to start with you because... Uh, on January 30th, coming up in just a couple of weekends here, we have the St. Mary's, the annual uh, 10K Ski Classic. And this year, it's bigger and better than ever. Some new, uh, new things going on with the 10K Classic. Yeah, really. We, uh, this is our seventh year hosting the race. Typically, it's been one race, a 10K Classic race, where the skiers ski uh, in, in uh, the tracks. And uh, we had people requesting we do a skate race as well. So this year, we did schedule... A classic race at 10 o'clock Sunday morning and a skate race at 1 o'clock. And then fortunately, uh, the Winona Ski Club and St. Mary's have got a nice partnership going. And on Thursday nights, they've got a youth ski league um, that's been very successful. Actually, 75 young, young skiers have been showing up. So we've added a third race okay. at 11 o'clock on Sunday for uh, uh, young people 4 to 12 years old. So really, we're going from 1 to 3, so we're, uh, <laughs> we're blossoming. Um, once again, uh, I don't know if, I, uh, if, if you recall, we put in some snowmaking equipment three years ago. And ever since we put in that snowmaking equipment, it's been snowing every winter. Take so it I think out, that Chris. Take it I think we upset <laughs> the snow. You would need it. We upset the snow <laughs> gods. So all we do is go out and fire up the equipment to make sure that it's working. And lo and behold, uh, we get a fall blizzard, and we've been right. enjoying good skiing all year. Yeah. And uh, you know, <coughs> we uh, if you'd like to participate in the 10K ski race, so you are asked to 
pre-register if possible, or yep. there is registration uh, the day of the event. Too. Yep. If you go to our website, to the uh, athletic website, there's an icon right there where you can download a registration form and uh, mail that in, or you can just arrive uh, uh, Sunday morning. There's the times up there, and uh, Gary and his crew will be able to register you that day. Okay. Chris, talk a little bit about <coughs> you were kind of the brainchild of this seven years ago. Talk a little bit about what kind of spurred this this on and you know now like you say seven years later we're, we're just continuing yeah. to grow. <clears throat> well Donnie you know we, we used to have a, a collegiate ski team uh, for years and a kind of a combination of other conference members uh, had some difficulty putting teams together. We did go through kind of a drought of snow uh, and actually the conference had dropped Nordic skiing as a, uh, a championship competitive sport but since we have the beautiful trails up there in St. Mary's we wanted to keep things going so we did start a citizens race um, to, again, to make sure we've got access and uh, to get people out in the winter time, and that's kind of how it began in the first place. Yeah. All right, uh, Gary Borash, you're with us as well, and uh, your <coughs> first time on the Cardinals Nest, Gary, and uh, yeah. you are the new director for the Outdoor Leadership Office at St. Mary's, and uh, what some people may not know is you're also an alum of the university. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you landed as uh, director of the Outdoor Leadership Office. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I. Uh, I graduated in May, um, this past May, from St. Mary's with mm -hmm. an environmental biology degree. And I had worked some with outdoor leadership, um, leading some trips and as a ropes course facilitator. And so um, I was kind of looking to see if I could, you know, get back into the university in, in that kind of a position. And I ended up taking an internship in Arizona for the summer mm -hmm. and then through October. Um, but then the spot opened up. The previous outdoor leadership coordinator, Davey Warner, um, ended up leaving, and so they had an opening, and um, I applied, and, and yeah. here I am. I well, guess, and so. Chris, for you, perfect timing. You get somebody who knows the university, clearly knows and loves the outdoors. Absolutely. Which is <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and our outdoor leadership office isn't just about, I mean, it's, you go out and have fun, but there is an educational component mm -hmm. to it. And again, Gary's background in environmental biology, our partnership with a group called Leave No Trace, uh, talks about recreational ethics and things like that. It's a perfect fit for us. And like, like Gary had mentioned, he's already a ropes course facilitator. You're talking about the swim team success uh, on Wednesday of last week prior to that meet. Uh, Gary w and I were out to the, our farm with the swim team on an hour and a half snowshoe and uh, cooking some hot dogs on the fire. So, uh, so Gary brings a lot of skills, and uh, we're really excited to have him working well, with well, us. Gary, right now here in the winter months, of course, you have the ski classic coming up. What else are some of the other activities your office is sort of sponsoring or at least getting ready for? Okay. Um, well, over the last couple of days of break, we just had um, seven students participate in a winter camping trip. Um, we ended up going to the state forest um, just a little ways north of campus and mm -hmm. um, doing some hiking on snowshoes and setting up camp, camping for the night and okay. doing some more hiking, coming back. Now, hopefully um, you beat the really bitterly cold <laughs> temperatures anyway. Yeah, yeah, we got by. Everybody had fun. Okay. No frostbite or anything. Good, good. Um, so then besides the skiing and then that winter camping, we're organizing, actually we have another skiing activity planned for this week. Uh, moonlight skiing. There's a full moon on Thursday night, and so um, one of the students at St. Mary's, Colin Gibbons, is leading a group mm -hmm. to go skiing by moonlight. And then um, we'll have some snowshoeing uh, hikes coming up probably next week or the week after. And I have sleds that I've actually had a couple groups ask to borrow in the near future, and so um, lots of opportunities there too. Donnie, moonlight skiing. You ought to ask uh, Dee Dee if it sounds romantic. <laughs> no, I'm thinking the, snowsho <laughs> the snowshoeing part is good, but the skiing will stay away from the skiing. Yeah, I know you've gotten into the snowshoeing. Absolutely. Snow Gary, talk a little bit about the ropes course. Obviously, it's not something in the winter months that we, we utilize a lot, but talk a little bit about the ropes course because it is kind of a, a kind of a neat niche that we do have at St. Mary's. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the ropes course is um, basically it's it's whatever you want to make it really we can have we have a lot of flexibility with programs we can do on the ropes course and a lot of people don't know but it actually can be used year round um, only extreme weather would keep us from from going out there like a thunderstorm or something um, we were actually out there last January with a, a class from St. Mary's and they had a lot of fun um, but some of the things we can do are we have a lot of um, team building and like problem solving games and other activities that we can do with groups and then um, obviously the the high ropes elements are, are more of like a, a challenge and and a fun thing and so um, 
we like to kind of do a progression and start a group with some, some lower stuff, some team building, trust building, and then work up and kind of culminate with something big like the zip line or um, the pamper pole or leap of faith. Well, it really sounds to me like it's a great opportunity for either educational institutions or companies who are looking to build teamwork, networking <laughs> skills uh, to, to, to do that. And you would be the contact at St. Mary's, right? Yeah. Um, and so the contact information, um, like the same as for the ski race, they can email me or mm -hmm. um, call me. Uh, my extension up there is 8740. Yeah, 457-8740, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And, you know, in addition to uh, this standalone, all those activities are fantastic. But as you know, St. Mary's also has summer camps. And the ropes course and the disc golf and the trails and all those things really enhance uh, those opportunities and really make it uh, make for some, some neat outings. Yeah. So. And, Gary, I also <coughs> wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, St. Mary's, the first uh, restoration, the prairie restoration project that you're uh, helping out with uh, through the biology department. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, so... Uh, maintenance was kind enough to get a couple plots ready. We have some 25 by 50 foot plots that we tried two different methods basically and um, we worked with a professor at Winona State and then with Prairie Moon Nursery to kind of gather a, a bunch of seeds of native prairie species that we, me and a couple students and Dr. Finnerty from the biology department um, worked together to prepare and then so out there mm -hmm. right before the snow came. So hopefully <laughs> I was going to say that picture, I, I long for the days, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I know Chris doesn't because you're looking forward to that uh, 10K ski class. But Chris, the, you know, projects like uh, that restoration project right down your alley, you just yeah. must be thrilled with some of the things that Gary is advancing and that your area is really Absolutely. participating in. Actually, a little known fact, Gary, uh, summer before last, uh, helped plant a garden down the road from the, the village in Gilmore Valley there and uh, put a lot of work into it and uh, in the end unfortunately we had some very well-fed deer. Uh, <laughs> in fact Phil Cochran uh, came in one morning and called me and he said I saw seven deer standing in your garden. So <laughs> but it is, it, is, it, is, it is fun. I mean we live in a great place and just connecting people with some food and, and the outdoors and things like mm -hmm. that. I mean a wide variety and again I'm just thrilled that Gary brings the uh, interest and expertise that he does to this position because there's a lot more things that uh, we've been talking about that are very exciting. I'd like to put that contact <coughs> information again for the St. Mary's uh, 10K Ski uh, Classic up on the screen. And, and Chris, uh, for those who have not uh, done this before, tips for the St. Mary's Ski Trail. What, what advice could you offer for somebody who hasn't done this race before? Well, um, we do set up the race uh, on the relatively flat areas. I mean, our trails are very, very challenging. We've mm -hmm. got one called Rattlesnake, and it's, and it's uh, <laughs> for a good reason. But we really do try to have this just be an event both for competitive skiers but for recreational skiers. So now the first, the first point of advice would be don't back out because you're concerned about it. I mean, uh, Brother John Grover has got two beginner ski classes. Both those classes are going to be there. These are people who just put skis on for the first time this season. So anybody can do it, whether you're highly competitive or just recreational. Uh, please, if you're thinking about it at all, come out and do it. it it's, uh, it's a very fun event, and, and again, don't be intimidated by the fact that it says race or the competition part of it. Okay, that's going to do it uh, for the Cardinal's Nest here this week on HBC. I'd like to thank uh, Gary and Chris for joining us. Good luck at the 10K Classic there on January 30th. Thanks to you for watching. Tune in again next week for another Cardinal's Nest on HBC.